Coming up on Sowby and Lofty Lux, AI. Is it a good thing or is it going to turn us all into morons? Breaking news about Puffin Arrival Day. And the complicated politics of ant <laughs> pollination. This is Sowby and Lofty Lux. <laughs> Tape from Studio Senseless in Leafy London Town. It's Sour B and Luff Deluxe. Welcome, all creatures great and small. Oh, nice. To uh, Sowby and Lofty Lux. I'm Brian Luff. <laughs> and I'm Georgina Sowerby. And kicking off as ever with matters arising. Matters Georgina. arising this week. What? We watched we watched the gardening show on Sunday night, which chilled us... No, Friday night, which chilled us out, ready for the weekend. Um, I, for some reason, I've forgotten what it's called. Gardener's World, is it? Gardener's World. Gardener's World, it, that will do. Yeah. And Monty Don, bless him, can, can grow all plants. He can grow all things, but I can't. And I was reading an article um, in the week about if we all threw our apples and pears and vegetables out of the window as we drove along, <laughs> there'd be a lot more trees around because... They would grow from these pips. And I thought, that's rubbish. But while we were watching Monty Don, he had the audacity, the audacity to say, plant a hazelnut (laughs) and a hazel tree will grow. Monty, that's not a thing. If I was to plant, uh, I could plant a billion hazelnuts. And none of them would grow into trees. I could scatter hazelnuts far and wide. With a perimeter of like a thousand miles and we wouldn't get one little sapling. But it doesn't matter because Monty is so relaxing, (laughs) isn't he? (laughs) And his dogs. Even the dog he carries in his coat is relaxing. The other thing that always annoys you is when he he cuts something right down to the (laughs) ground. He literally gets a saw <laughs> and he, he goes up to a tree and he, and he says, he now, just, yeah. this needs pruning, he says. Accent. And he he saws it off almost to the ground level. <laughs> yeah, Fo- and he said, oh, this will have grown back in a week's time. <laughs> following following week, uh, you know, there's a it's grown back. Yeah, it's a know. hedge. Oh, Monty, God bless him. There's no lids on coleslaw anymore. <laughs> yeah, now I'm laughing. But I this, know. It's annoying it's, the hell out of me. It's made you very because angry we, this week. We thought that it was just one supermarket yeah. um, and it was just one product, yeah. i.e. coleslaw yeah. or, or dip, yeah. right? And we thought, okay, well, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, first of all, you try and peel it off and it come, just comes <laughs> falls to pieces, yes, right? it does. And then you realise that there's no actual lid underneath. No. So not only have you not got a lid, but you haven't even got the film that you peeled no, off no. to put back on. So is this cynical? Are they just saying, well, you know, you can't seal it up, so you're going to have to eat the whole lot and buy some more? Well, is that I th- what yes, this is about? I think or even if you don't eat it up, you put it in the fridge, it goes off quicker, doesn't it? And therefore you have to buy more. But this is every supermarket. It's it's- doing- I did the research. Mm. I did the research, B, and no supermarket has got a lid on coleslaw anymore and then it's every single supermarket like tesco's and waitrose and m&s you've checked all of them checked all of them and i think you said that people are ranting about it like mad on it's, social media it's online well. because i thought am i the only person to be angry that they're saving i mean they're also saving money by presumably but also if you think ethically then there's less plastic so that is that a good thing but i've come up with a solution it's a solution that just involves us doing something rather than the supermarkets doing something mm. and that's just a put a foil lid on it and I know my grandma would be very proud of me I'm saving food in the fridge and we said oh we'll use it because I buy coleslaw every because you do this weird thing where you eat pizza with coleslaw you can't eat pizza unless you have coleslaw so every week I buy coleslaw you have a little teaspoonful next to your pizza and there's four fifths of it left in the fridge well, to go off. What I'm trying to do is, like, I had opened a t- tub of uh, guacamole, right, yes. last night. Yeah. And my solution to not having to reseal it is just to eat, <laughs> to eat the-, the entire tub of guacamole. Yeah, you see, it's working for them, isn't it? Yeah, and that It's means- either going off or it's being so eaten. So that means you're going to order more and <laughs> I'm going to eat more. <laughs> 
So that was it. Put lids on coleslaw, supermarkets. It's annoying. That was uh, this week's Matters Arising. Next up, artificial intelligence. Should we really be worried? We are the mice who live under the sink and we like eating peanut butter. So the increasingly worrying world of artificial intelligence. Right? Now this has <laughs> yeah. been this has been all over the news for the last few weeks. It so has. I thought I thought rather than just read about it, I'll get involved. <laughs> I thought. Okay, throw so, yourself in, have so, you? So what I did, I thought I'll make some promos yeah. for this podcast mm-hmm. using AI. Right. And I found a, a free trial uh, on a site. Mm. Uh, I, won't, I won't mention it because there's various sites that, yes. that do this. Found a free trial, and what it does is you upload your podcast to it or whatever is the product is that you're you're making. And in my case, as a as a trial to do this, I I uploaded episode one mm-hmm. of this series. Right. So uh, that's the that was uh, mid early February, right? Okay. So I've, they've got that audio right within thirty seconds. Uh-oh. I would say <laughs> Were they funnier the than that? AI <laughs> had had scanned through that forty minutes of audio. Yes, and f- and it did ver- a lot of things, mm-hmm. various things. But the first thing it did was it wrote a billing <gasps> for the show. Right. Oh my word! I'll read it to you because it's on, fascinating on, to know yeah. what a robot <laughs> thinks of one of our ma- bits of madness makes okay. of this podcast. Okay. So AI describes our podcast. In this episode of the podcast, the hosts discuss a variety of topics, oh, yeah. ranging from their fear of the world <laughs> around them to a family being chased by a luminous flying egg in flying saucers. Yes, right. OK. They also talk about reusing items instead of replacing them mm-hmm. and the dreaded, quote, bed hat <laughs> <laughs> that one of the hosts received as a gift. Right. right? The conversation then turns to theories about whether the flying object was actually an egg or just a big (laughs) balloon. Okay. The hosts also mention that they will be playing a game of Trivial Pursuit later in the episode and discuss the Penfield Reef Lighthouse. Okay. Overall, it's an entertaining and light-hearted episode with plenty of humour and interesting topics. So uh, that's a robot uh, describes this as an entertaining and light-hearted well, episode. Well, I'm glad right. that robot enjoyed It makes it sound a little bit dull, doesn't no, it? Does you, it understand we're now, doing comedy? If you saw that on the billing for, for say, this podcast, yeah. right, you wouldn't think I'd written that. You'd think, well, no, that's, a bit, that's all a bit odd. I well, mean, it's completely accurate. It's accurate, but it's not very interesting. So if you worked for an advertising agency, for example, you mm-hmm. would take that, you'd go through it, you'd sub it, you'd make it a bit more chatty, but it yeah. would save you probably an hour yes. of, of, of going through it. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now, what it does is it, lis- it doesn't just listen and, and transcribe what you've, what you've done. It comes up with suggestions for headlines oh, my word. that you can use. Okay. So... Uh, for example, five minutes in, possible title, suggestion to put a bell on speaker or compare to a character who lurks behind doors. Oh, that right, doesn't you remember make that? sense. So we, this is when we were talking about putting a bell on you so I could see you in the dark. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, six minutes in, it says discussions about life insurance and hot chocolate changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, when you were uh, talking about wearing your mask over your eyes, right? Yes. Uh, ten minutes in, uh, headline, Avoiding the World Through Sleep and Silence. Oh, my, that's the title of my autobiography, isn't it? And uh, and the one I, I zoomed in on to think, OK, we'll ask it to do a promo using this, is a time-travelling lottery winner's disappearance and confrontation with government agencies. <gasps> now, yes. if you remember in episode yep. one, we talked about the fact that uh, you can find uh, aliens mm-hmm. uh, because they will have won the lottery. Yes. The first thing yeah, they will yeah, do yeah. if they are time-travelling aliens is they will win the lottery. Yes. Right? So, it, I mean, there's a whole load of, of, of headlines uh, that, that, that the AI came up with, but that's the one I decided to go with. Mm-hmm. And I automatically just clicked a button and said, make a promo with this. Yes. It took a chunk of audio. It put it into uh, into a design. Uh, it took a photograph of us. Uh, it ran text, uh, moving animated text under you talking and talking about uh, aliens. Uh, and it put the, pulled the whole thing together and it squirted it out in three different uh, shapes. One for Instagram, 
well, one for uh, uh, YouTube and one for TikTok. And that whole process took about 10 minutes. That's scary. And it's and if you want to see it... We're not going to be needed in five years' time, are we? If you want to see it, guys, I've put it on TikTok and I've put mm -hmm. it on our Instagram feed so you can see, right? Now, whether or not we're going to use this as a kind of basis for promoting this show, I don't know. But it's it it's both fascinating, uh, it's encouraging, but what it makes me worry is this, right? There's people, there's kids at university mm. writing their thesis using AI. Yep. So they get their degree. Yep. They then get a job in television promotions. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the job I used to have in yes. in the real world. Doing right? promos. I used to write promos for TV. So I, if I was doing that now, I could put the the, uh, the program that I've been asked to make a promo into this AI. And it would write the script for me. It would choose these shots um, and it would put the whole thing together. So, in other words, a complete idiot could do that job now. Mm -hmm. And that's lucky because all the people coming out of university <laughs> are complete idiots because their thesis has been written by AI. Yes. Uh, what worries me is that in the future that means that, you know, people are just going to be stupid and it won't matter. Because, because still the, the get robots a job will do everything And the robots anyway. will do everything. We, we, we're going to have a race of complete idiots. I think we need to put a star next to this podcast because I think this is when we realised that human beings are going to dissolve as a race and that our podcast can probably be done by robots and that way no one has to do anything. We can just upload it once a week and no one will know any different because you can actually get AI that mimics. I was just reading before we came into the studio because I knew you were talking about AI. A German magazine has just got into trouble because it advertised the world's first interview with Michael Schumacher and everyone got very excited. It turns out it was a fake interview and it was generated by AI, an AI that was trained to mimic celebrities. Wow. So they can feed all the information in, say how they talk, what they do, you know, milestones in their life, and then the robot will simply well, put the interview back. On that basis, this AI, we could give it the 14 shows that we've recorded yes. up to date. Yeah. It would learn how we talk. It would yeah. learn the kind of rubbish we talk about. <laughs> yeah. It would research those types of, of subjects, yeah. and it would actually be possible, and probably possible within the next few years for yes. this entire podcast. Yes. to be done by AI. Maybe long after we're dead. Maybe we can set it up so that a, a weekly <laughs> Salve in Love podcast will come out for centuries. <laughs> That's a, and there's a thought. Is that a bit scary, though? Because you can now, you can get um, an image of... A loved one that's died, can't you, that actually moves if you've saved enough information about them? No, I don't like the sound of that. Either. No. So what are the key takeaways from this podcast then? What did the computer think were the key takeaways well, that it needed to It's got a heading. <laughs> key, All right. Key takeaway. Yeah. The podcast transcript consists of repeated conversation. <laughs> repeated conversations. Between two individuals yeah. about the identity. This is specifically about that one episode between two individuals about the identity of Dr. Benjamin Spock and the author of the book Baby and Child Care. Right. The conversation includes a penalty for incorrect answers. Now, we in see, that, it's yeah. talking about the quiz that we do at the end. That's too specific, but and it, it doesn't sum up the show, we, does it, no, at all? We mentioned once Dr. Benjamin Spock. Yeah, and it's gone with And it. it's decided that that's going to be the thing that's the easiest to promote it right. on in terms of search uh, okay. for it. So it's no. suggesting that that's the headline that we should use for that episode. It also gave us a list of people that we'd mentioned in the podcast, mm -hmm. which bizarrely included Champ Bailey, the... Uh, Sports star Steven Spielberg, Hugh Edwards, the newsreader, nice. and Lord Robert Baden Powell. <laughs> Did we? <laughs> it makes me want to listen to that show. Again. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? You go, oh, well, that sounds quite interesting. So, coming up next is Don't Bogart the Finger Monkey. Don't Bogart the Finger Monkey. What you got, Georgina? Uh, in Norway. They have Puffin Arrival Day on the 14th of April. That's a lovely thing. Isn't that a lovely thing to celebrate? Puffin Arrival Don't Day. Don't puffins arrive anywhere else? Is it just in Norway? I thought pu no, they, puffins no. are international, aren't they? Puffins arrive everywhere, mm. 
but only Norway celebrates it with a with a puffin arrival day. You gotta love the Norwegians. I know. You? Nothing Why? happens in Norway. So when the puffins arrive, everyone goes, Oh, let's have a day to celebrate. There's puffins in this country, so I think we should campaign yes. for uh, setting up a, a puffin arrival day in this country. And I think it should be a bank holiday so we can all go to the seaside and watch the puffins arrive. I think we get a day off. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. April the fourteenth, day off. Where are most of the puffins in Scotland, aren't they? <laughs> Don't they fly into Scotland? That's the nearest to Norway. <laughs> they fly into Scotland. Yeah, they fly into Edinburgh and then take the train I'm down to always London. Always fascinated when I see a picture of a puffin. It's always got something in its mouth. Yes, it Have does, doesn't it? That? Yeah, little little fish. For years, I thought that a puffin <laughs> had like kind of long jowls coming out of its mouth, a bit like that monster in Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, got you. But, yeah, but it's yeah, because yeah. puffins just basically just... refuse to be photographed without <laughs> fish dangling out of their mouth. A bit like me. A bit like a Hunter S. Thompson would never be photographed without a, a cigarette, cigarette uh, coming, coming, out, out, of coming out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've also written down uh, for Don't Bogart, Ant Poly nation politics what's that all about well we watched a country program a countryside program can't remember what it was and there were two very rare plants and these two very rare plants of which there were only about two plants in existence of Mm. either of them Mm. and they're both found on the same mountain but at different sides of the mountain and one of the flowers requires an ant to pollinate it But the flower next to it has a stem that traps ants. (laughs) And I'm just thinking any ant worth its soul is walking along, la, 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 la. It comes to the two flowers and goes, oh, excellent flowers. Now, which is the one that requires me to pollinate it? And which is the one that I'll die on? So what it decides to do is not visit either of them. And as a result, both plants are becoming extinct. It doesn't make sense. You're, that plant is too specific, isn't it? You'd think that the plant that kills the ants mm. is very clever yes. to position itself right next to the plant <laughs> that attracts the ants. So it making the, the, the decision even more difficult for the ant of which way to go. Yes. The plants are not dissimilar in the way they look, are they? No, they're not. They've both got little yellow so flowers. one way means death. Yes. The other way means, oh, lovely, <laughs> la, 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 la. Just... And I think that perhaps it could be a really exciting video game where you're first person ant and you're going along and you reach two flowers and you've got to decide which way to go and sometimes it results in a (laughs) sticky mess in which you're there for another four hours trying to get out Um, and sometimes you get to frolic around and pollen and be all happy and when you get killed by the plant it just goes "Uh -uh." Uh -uh. game (laughs) over game over borrow my doggy (laughs) borrow my doggy is a thing i didn't know that this was a thing but borrow my doggy is a thing now apologies to all listeners if i'm very late to this but i was thinking that um because one of my friends has a dog and it means that sometimes she can't go out during the day because this dog gets a little anxious so um she was saying oh i might go on borrow my doggy and it means that they put people who don't have dogs who would like to spend time with dogs in contact with people who have a dog but don't have time to spend with it. So the dog wins out in the end. <laughs> but it's called Borrow My Dog. And I just thought that's really quite funny, isn't it? Because I remember my... I mean, this is going back 20 years. But my friend had a dog. And every time we took this dog walking, men would talk to us. It was a real dating asset, OK? And they're like, oh, what a lovely dog. And that would start the conversation. People talk to you if you have a dog. So I'm thinking anyone who actually is on one of those horrible websites like Hinge or Tinder, would be actually better off to go on Borrow My Doggy because then you can borrow someone's cute little dog, go for a walk in the park, and all women slash men will talk to you. Also, it it means if you've got a dog, Mm. right, you don't have to do anything. (laughs) You just... You just get someone else to take it for a walk. Yeah. Maybe that person could come around and feed yeah. it yes. for you. Yes, no, well. but they do that. So as well. you have a dog without any of the inconvenience <laughs> of having a dog. Of having a dog. No, maybe you could employ someone to to stroke it. Yes. as well. You get and, a robot and pet to do it. that. Maybe you could get someone to come and sit next to you on the couch, and the dog could sit on their lap. Yeah. So that you don't have to be anywhere near the dog. Maybe then you could pat the person who was patting the dog and make <laughs> friends with that person. Anyway, I, yes, I didn't know 
that rent a dog was a thing, but apparently you can rent a dog. Uh, more Bogart the Finger Monkey in the next podcast. Coming up next, it's words that are nice to say. Sour Bee and Love Deluxe. This week's word that is nice to say is splendiferous. Aww. Let's say it together, shall we? Splendiferous. splendiferous. Turn to someone close to you, look deep into their eyes, grasp their face firmly in your hands and oh, say, splendiferous. splendiferous. Place it in a sentence for us, Georgina. Oh, the cream cheese banana and peanut butter sandwich I just made for my lunch was splendiferous. That's splendiferous. splendiferous. Today's official word that is nice to say on Salby and Luff Deluxe. Still to come, Country Village News. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Gary the Gorilla. Yoo-hoo! And an update on Murphy the bald-headed eagle oh. who has been incubating a rock. Excellent. To listen to the full-length version of this podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash studio senseless and become a patron of Sourby and Luff Deluxe.